$82,730. That is how much you have to pay to attend MIT for a year. You could buy a Porsche, a Beamer, a Lexus, and have change left for a cigar with that much money. And here's the thing, I'm Romanian. I don't have four years to waste before I get my first paycheck. And even six years after that, I still be paying off the loan. Eight years ago, I was a barista who wanted to become a web developer and I had essentially zero savings. So here's how I became a web developer in nine months with zero dollars. Imagine an architect who doesn't know what an architect's job is. He doesn't know what he's supposed to build. He doesn't know if it's a hospital, a bank, a school. How the f is he supposed to design it, spend millions of dollars and months doing the drawings and budgeting? He would be pretty dumb, right? Well, that's exactly what most aspiring developers do. This includes myself. For the first three months, I was using a platform called lynda.com. It's now called LinkedIn Learning. See how old I am? Just building hello worlds in different languages and collecting a bunch of Udemy courses on sale in my wishlist. I was stuck in this tick box mentality like when you are at school and you have to tick the topics you've studied. But when it comes to the real world, this mentality will hold you back. Instead of ticking boxes, figure out what you want to build and why it will be useful to someone. Then dive deep into building rather than meaningless memorization. Drill deep into your knowledge gaps instead of hiding away from them. See this chain I'm wearing? Imagine if one of these links broke. Just one. The whole chain would be useless. By ignoring languages or frameworks or plugins or concepts which we aren't comfortable with, we are exactly like the useless chain. The good news is that just taking one or two days to drill deep into your weaknesses, do a bit of troubleshooting, uh, do a bit of research to fill those knowledge gaps, that will give you a massive ROI, which stands for return of investment in your confidence and effectiveness as a developer. And think about it from an employer's view. They don't want someone who hides away from the nitty gritty details and throws them to someone else like a hot potato. Better say, I don't know, let me go and learn it, than I don't know, so I'll hide away and let someone else do it. It's like walking with crutches. For example, when I was learning React, I always struggled with props. And what I used to do was create components, pass props through them, and then delete everything and start again until I could do it without even thinking. A very Neanderthalian approach but it worked very well for me. Step three is setting the right kind of goals. Everyone sets a goal of getting a job, but that's like saying, I hope I win the lottery this Sunday. That's out of your control. The only thing you can control is to buy the tickets. And that's an input goal, not an output goal. So carefully set input goals, which will hold you to a high standard every day. When I was learning code, my goal was to sit my ass on the chair as soon as I stepped in my home and work on a project for two hours. No excuses. The next type of goal would be to achieve a task within this project. There are so many people who spend hours, literally hours, achieving absolutely nothing. Time passes anyway. What's important is what you do at that time. Are you gonna be the guy that watches a 17 hour tutorial and copies someone else as they write lines of code? Or, are you gonna be the guy who actually stretches your brain and builds something on your own? Step four is to find a community with people who are striving to achieve the same goals as you are. Would you trust a fat doctor? I hope not, because he says one thing and does another thing. In the same way, there are so many charlatans in this industry. You're not the mayor. Things change. It's easy to feel like you are making progress when really you are just doing the same thing as everyone else who's never ever gonna land a job. I want you to imagine that you're in a boat in the middle of the ocean. It could be just you or you could have five others rowing with you in the boat. But even then, you might not have a compass. You could end up at the North Pole or you could be on a yacht sipping whiskey with Conor McGregor. Who the fuck is that guy? As Charlie Munger said, the boat you are in matters more than how hard you are rowing. I saw way too many aspiring developers navigating this vast ocean of information, rowing in circles in the middle of nowhere, without a compass, without a direction. If you find yourself building basic applications after two, three years, and you get zero interviews, you need to change things swiftly.
Step five is to be extremely impatient. The moment my shift ended, I'm running to the bus, firing up a coding podcast to fill my brain with new words and develop my vocabulary. As soon as I step into my room, I grab my laptop from my bed, open up my editor, and I get coding. Impatient as fuck to put two, three hours in. Impatient to add a new feature to my project that I was thinking about for the past 11 hours. You can't control which job application is going to be the one. You can control how many job applications you send. You can't control if a recruiter or hiring manager likes you or not. You can control the projects you are building that make you stand out. You cannot control the outputs. And that's what most people don't understand. What you can control are the hours you put in and what you do in those two to three hours. When I got that first job, I felt nothing. When I got my first 100K in the bank, I felt nothing. I was measuring my success based on the activities I was taking every single day. Success, the money and the freedom you'll actually gain from this career is a lagging indicator from your day-to-day -day efforts. So focus on those. Step six is to understand your season. In spring, farmers prepare the soil and plant the seeds. During summer, farmers monitor and maintain the soil. They water the plants and carefully remove the weeds. And in autumn, farmers get the reward of all their hard work. A career change works in seasons too. You start by learning the basics, be it HTML and CSS, then JavaScript, then React, then other technologies. Then you switch up to building, where you build some complex projects to show off your skills, to gain exposure and experience. And then, and only then, you get into the season of earning. I see most aspiring developers planting a few seeds here and there, barely watering them. Their crops are filled with weeds and they sit there wondering where the money is. Thank God, that's your competition. Imagine just putting 12 months of two to three hours a day, planting the rice seeds, spreading the best fertilizer, and carefully getting rid of all the bad weeds. Step seven is to compare yourself with others. Imagine you are in a supermarket in Thailand and you have 15 brands of coffee you never tried before. You'll make a decision quickly based on previous experience. Now I want you to imagine the dumbest advice given to me when I was learning code. Only compare yourself with yourself, never with others. Too bad that I took that advice because I had months of applying to jobs, getting absolutely zero interview. Recruiters, on the other hand, were comparing my resume with another hundred they had piled up on their desk. I was literally a carbon copy of every aspiring developer out there until my mentor started guiding me and telling me what projects to build. He was roasting my code, my application, and with his advice and guidance, I managed to get my first job. The competition is non-existent in terms of juniors nowadays. You need to worry more about the established ones, and there are ways to go around that, and maybe I'll make another video where I'm gonna touch on this subject. And step eight, you're only two to three months away. I remember finishing my first project. I was happy, yet, empty. I wanted more. I wanted to learn more stuff. I was hungry for more. So I decided to spend at least three months working on another project. So I laid out 50 ideas for that project. I just knew from my previous experience of music production that my next project will be better, bigger, and I have to spend more and more time building. That project helped me solidify all the knowledge I gained from the past six months. And finally, once I got an interview, I secured the job. So understand this. When you think you are done, you are just getting started. I literally molded the entire mentorship program around this concept. This concept is called the infinite game. If you never have an end goal when it comes to building your projects and focus on your inputs, getting that job is just a matter of time. I can guarantee you that if you follow this process, you can get a developer job that pays you at least 80k a year without having to spend a single dime attending MIT. So I just saved you four years at MIT and $330,000. You can thank me later. Cheers.